the bottom side of the National 183D receiver. I've elected it to mount the K1S board on the back of this aluminum panel. Right across from it is the terminal board E2 for standby operation. Hey, welcome to D-Lab. In this video, I would like to introduce you to my newest product called the K1S Relay System. It's designed to go into two type receivers. It enhances their performance and gives you a layer of safety that these old radios never had. Let me show you what it's about. All right, so the K1S module is a standby switching system that is built into your radio. It removes the hazardous voltages from the rear terminal of the receiver, plus has some added benefits. In this video, I'll show you how easy it is to install this system into a National 183D receiver. I also have other receivers that this kit will go into, including the HROs, the straight 183, 173, and several others. Email me and I'll let you know which ones I have on the list, and if it's not on there, I can probably make it fit in yours too. So before we begin, let me show you how beautiful this NC183D is. This is not for sale. This is a unit that I use in my station. Take a look under the hood. She's absolutely gorgeous. 100% stock and it has the D-Lab crystal calibrator installed. So I don't get lost to these dials. I know exactly where I'm at. And Take a look at the top lid. There are no heat marks from tubes. This receiver has had very little use, maybe a couple hours of operation on it when I acquired it. It's a real jewel. Well here's the situation. I had one of these radios that came into the shop years ago and there was a big flash mark on the back panel. I thought, what happened? Did it get hit by lightning? No. Here's what happened. I've got this voltmeter set up for 1500 volts DC and if you go over here to your standby switch terminals you'll see there's 285 volts there 284 there it's because the front standby switch right now is in receive if I go to transmit you see it drops out there but it's still present here and now it's up to 310 so these are the contacts that would normally go to your Dow key relay to mute the receiver when you're in transmit mode, okay? But even if you're not using that, there's over 300 volts waiting on these terminals. So what happened, I guess, is this guy had done some work. He was pushing his radio back into position, and he had some ground runners back there that fed all of his radios. What hit the terminal? Kerpow! And the biggest issue is not only a safety hazard, but it can damage the radio because this high voltage is not fused. So taking a quick look at the schematic, here is your power transformer, 5U4 high voltage rectifier, goes through the choke, straight up to pin 3 of E2, the standby terminal board on the back of the radio. So there's always 300 volts sitting there regardless of the position of the standby switch. A very hazardous condition, and I have a solution. So the plan is, is to remove the 300 volts from this terminal board, and how I'm gonna do that is by using my K1S board, okay? So this board will go inside of the receiver. It has a relay that will safely switch the 400 volts. Now you'll simply ground a terminal using your TR switch contact. You'll have a maximum of 12 volts potential. Here we are, bottom side of the National 183D receiver. I've elected to mount the K1S board on the back of this aluminum panel. Right across from it is the terminal board E2 for standby operation. You can see we're in the high voltage section. Over here is a tube that I'm gonna steal the six volt AC to operate the board. So let's get it wired up. So looking at the back of the E2 standby board, there was two wires connected here, which are these two. You have two wires here and a single wire here, which are jumped together 
on the back side of the radio. So one lead of my board will go to these two and the other lead will junction with these three leaving this board open we're going to add a ground and then you have your switching terminal. All right, wiring of the K1S is complete. I tapped my filament supply off of that tube socket. This is the high voltage leads that are now spliced in to the leads that used to be on the terminal board. Okay. Then, as a bonus, we have this green and white lead which go up here to the antenna terminals. So when the transmitter keys, it breaks the high voltage, muting the receiver, and this set of contacts shorts the antenna terminal to protect this radio from any chance of stray RF entering. Well, obviously the most important question is, did I eliminate that hazardous voltage that was sitting on the standby terminal strip. As you remember, we had 300 volts waiting to either get you or possibly damage your radio. Now, on the switch line, I've got 17 volts. And what that is, that's the coil voltage that's waiting to be grounded to mute the radio. So let's get this thing up and running and check out the new mute function. All right, so I've got the 183 powered up. We're in receive mode. I do not have an antenna connected, but you can hear the white noise. I'm monitoring the voltage on the standby terminal strip, and this is the voltage that would be resting on the contacts of your TR switch, okay? So let's say you just keyed the mic or flipped the switch, you're going to transmit mode, the dial key toggles, and the auxiliary contacts close, muting the receiver, okay? At the same time, that it's breaking the high voltage, it's also shorting out your antenna terminal. So, it's a, so as you can hear, it's a very clean transition from standby to operation. Sometimes when you're using an external switch, say a leaf switch on a dial key, if those contacts are a little bit dirty, you'll hear static and a popping in your receiver. With the contacts internal, to the receiver, you'll never have that happen. Well, let me point out a couple options. If you did not want to unwire this rear terminal board and splice in like I did to my relay, you can actually leave those wires in place on that terminal board, but what you'd have to do is install an insulative cover over these terminals. Then you could actually wire the relay direct to those terminals and just switch it from the inside. But if you did that, you would need a way to trigger the board. So if you were to repurpose this audio jack here, there's a phono jack right here, I believe it is for audio input, you could use that with an RCA cable to trigger the K1S. All right, back to that phono input plug. You see that's an RCA. Now, MFJ makes the model 1708B TR switch, and that's kind of the modern one available on the market. But what the problem is with the MFJ, if you take a look at this diagram, the internal K4 relay, which is their mute relay, only switches to ground. So if you had one of these vintage receivers and you had 300 volts on the terminals and you grounded it, I bet you you'd blow up the MFJ unit. So with the new K1S relay, you can use these new MFJ TR switches with no problem. Well, here's the NC183D in my station with the Johnson Viking 2. I'm using a Dow key relay. No, I'm not on these guys' frequency, but I just want to show you the TR action. So take a listen. Here we go. Absolutely no pops or whoops. Well, there you go. What a great enhancement for your old tube type receiver with an added level of safety. Because you sure don't want to damage your radio and you sure don't want to be reaching back there trying to adjust something and get hit by 300 volts, right? So at this point, I'm going to cut to the hookup diagram so you guys can take a look at how easy it is to install the K1S while I enjoy my Crestwood wine.
provided to me from a good friend. So this wine, Crestwood, is actually made in Walla Walla, Washington. So my friend Dr. Fox gave this wine to me to try. And you know what? If you take the cork off the Walla Walla, drop it on the floor, it goes bing bang. 